Boogie drop that beat. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Talking Out Loud with Miss Talkative. Everything I say is my own opinion, alleged, and strictly entertainment purposes. Remember, I'm just talking out loud. Please like, share, subscribe, comment on the video, let me know what you think. Destiny, who sent for you? Who sent for you? Because it definitely was not the viewers of Love and Marriage Huntsville. We weren't checking for you, wasn't asking about you. Carlos just lied to you. And you was feeling yourself way too much. You were too comfortable. You were in this interview with Carlos for about 50 minutes. And 40 of the minutes were spent bashing Melody. Why? I don't understand. Uh, Melody has not spoke on you um, in how long? She has not brought your name up since the reunion when y'all last spoke and said y'all last words. I don't understand how you feel as though that Melody sacrificed y'all friendship for a storyline. Destiny, I know people are supposed to hold their self in, with high regards and think highly of themselves, but you're giving yourself way too much credit, way too much credit. Melody had a storyline outside of you. You was trying to attach yourself to Melody. Not the other way around. And when people let you go, just walk on. You talking about, uh, you know, if people want to get out your life, then call them, call them an Uber and, and set them free. Melody did that to you. And she ended the friendship on a cordial, uh, on cordial terms. So if y'all see each other passing by, y'all can say hi and be friendly and be nice be nice to each other, be cordial without, you know, nutting up on each other. And so you must be bitter and, and still heartbroken that she did not want to be your friend anymore because you have done nothing but bash her all this time. I don't understand. And when you say that, um, Carlos, uh, do protect people and, and we need to stop saying that Carlos don't protect people. We never said that Carlos don't protect people. We know he does. What we said was Carlos don't protect Melody. They did a whole bashing thing last year of attacking Mel, Martell, the Scots, the Scots family. Everybody was ganging up on Melody and her mom for the last couple of seasons. And Melody was not protected. At all. Not at the reunion. Carlos owned nobody. So we never said that Carlos don't protect people. We know he does. But he protects who he want to protect. Uh, Martel have had all the protection of the uh, own network. The cast. You. Everybody. And has brought the show down tremendously. But he's still being protected. So we know Carlos protect people. But he protect who he want to protect. Uh, Carlos protect the Scots told them they don't have to show their businesses, their, re their true reality. Um, and they get away with it. All of y'all just showed up, clocked in and got a check and Melody was doing all the work. And you're saying that Melody is not, um, showing her true reality and she can give more. Wait a minute. I'm like, this is coming from the person that didn't show us anything. And you saying you was the most truthful. How? What did you show us? Even if you couldn't show us, um, you know, uh, your divorce and you couldn't speak about your ex-husband, there was other things that you could have spoke about. You could have spoke about Madani, the issues that you were, you were having with Madani. You could have, uh, showed us your, uh, took us down the path of you, um, getting a new transitioning from your husband's house to your house getting your other businesses or whatever um, path you took after the divorce, you could have done that. That didn't have anything to do with your, uh, your ex-husband. You were on the show, not your ex-husband. And if you want, if you didn't have a storyline outside of your ex-husband, then you really didn't need to be on the show. 
So I don't understand how you say um, Moses was mad at Carlos. Carlos should have been mad at you and Moses because, especially you, because you knew you were on a re reality show. And I know you like what you like or whatever, but you were on a reality show knowing that you were supposed to be in a relationship and you went and got a long, another long distance relationship and you knew that he had travel restrictions uh, from what we hear where he couldn't, he still couldn't film with you. So basically you um, try to hit your horse to somebody else to make sure that you had a storyline. So you wanted to beef and, and, and align yourself with Letitia because you knew she didn't like Melody either. So that was your storyline. But you're trying to make it seem like it was the other way around that Melody was using you for, for a storyline. Girl, you got a lot of nerves. You're mad at Melody because of your because she told everybody that she gave you, uh, she helped you out with some finances. Well, if she gave you money, she gave you money. What's the big deal? Y'all, y'all were friends, but had you not been up there trying to, um, align yourself with Tisha because you were, um, starting to, uh, pull back from Melody or you just needed a reason to not like Melody and, and be friends with Martell. Um, because Martell telling you to pick a side. You sat up there and said, well, I don't know where our friendship stand. And, you know, Melody hasn't been a good friend. So Melody said, let me show you what type of friend I've been. So you opened that door. And I don't blame her. I do not blame her. Now you want to sit up here talking about, oh, Tisha is your ride or die and this, that, and the third. But you were up there uh, trying to get business dealings from Melody. And that's why you mad because of that business deal falling through. But that business deal, once Melody made the connection, it had nothing to do with her. It was on you when Melody's friend seen how you was acting towards her. She said, wait a minute, this your friend and she acting like that, acting ugly with you. No, we can't do no business with, with her because I'm not about to put my business in jeopardy for her. Not with that type of attitude. See, you, you fumbled the bag on your own and you blame Melody because the, um, the lady is friends with Melody and she's like, wait a minute, I'm not going to allow you to treat my friend like that. And then I'm going to still give you my business. It doesn't work that way. See, that's when loyalty come into play, Destiny, which you don't know anything about. And you keep, you won't, um, you keep talking about Melody, how she acted. You said that she wasn't, um, you know, uh, she wasn't showing her true self. She, um, the Melody that you seen last year was not the Melody that you know. But then you, on the same interview, you saying that you were going through, um, a hardship and you wanted people to give you grace because you went through a divorce and you had custody case and you had to um accept it and live through it and i'm like wait a minute destiny melody just went through a divorce you barely lived with your husband and you got divorced quicker than you were you got married and Melody was married for 14 years, had four kids. Her court, her uh, custody case took forever and a day to be finalized. And she's still dealing with him because she has to deal with him through co-parenting and she has to film with him at work. So whatever you were going through or going through, put a thousand on it for Melody. But had you been her friend? You would have been, you would have known all of this. You would have been like, well, you know what? I know I'm going through this. And I, so I know she's going through something. So 
because that's my friend. She may say some things to me that I may not like. She may do some things that I may not like. She may be moving funny because of what all she's going through. But because she my friend, I'm going to have some compassion. I'm going to have some patience. I'm going to have a lot of empathy. And I'm just going to, you know, allow my friend to act out all her emotions that she needs to act out. And I'm still going to be her friend when it's all said and done. Because, because my friend needs some space and she may not call me back right away because I don't know what she's going through. Um, if she's tearing her house up in the closet crying, I don't know what's going on with my friend. I'm, I'm going to call her. If she don't answer, I'm going to send her a text and let her know, Hey friend, I'm here. I got you. You don't have to go through this alone. Whatever you need, just let me know. Reach out when you can. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. And when she's ready to talk, she'll talk. But at no certain time would, would I go and say, you know what? She ain't called me, so forget her. You should have understood because you were going through something similar. She going through it with your friend. The man that you're saying, oh, that's my best friend. That's my friend. And you didn't understand why she pulled back. Because she don't, the person that she's fighting, her, um, her, uh, she's going round and round to court with is your friend, the person that you're standing next to. And you feel as though that she should be all smiles and everything and be all nice to you and, and, um, and not say anything. So she don't get, the she don't get a chance to have emotions or act out her feelings because she got to be there for destiny. She got to have all, she got to uh, stand strong and um, put her feelings to the side because you need her. She got to sit up there and watch you um, play footsies with Martell and allow you to cut up and have, and, and be patient because of what you went through. It doesn't work that way because of a, a friend is a friend till the end. And you, the moment she stepped back, the, that's the moment you showed her just what type of friend you are not. You're mad with her because of that billing, that business deal fell through because she told the viewers about that money she gave you that you have yet to give her back. And you're mad because Martell is mad. And Martell is feeding you stuff saying that's not the real male. That's not the real male. And you are, now you want to stand on it. You took this whole interview to bash Melody. We didn't get a chance to hear nothing about what Destiny have going on. Um, what What's new for Destiny? What's next for Destiny? Only thing we heard was, yeah, I want to come back to the show or I will, I can be on um, Love and Marriage Detroit, either one. That's all we heard. We didn't hear nothing or about your podcast. You took all this time to bash Melody. So th to me, the interview was, it basically was not necessary. You talking about Tisha, your ride or die. We didn't hear nothing about you and Tisha. You say you and Stormy talk all the time. You didn't, you should have took the interview if that was the case and talked about um you and Stormy, you and Tisha, you and Martell, anybody else. But you took the opportunity, a whole interview to mash, uh, to um bash Melody. Girl, take that hurt and go somewhere and cry on Martell's shoulder. Because you, the minute you stepped off that a stage from the reunion, you went and started talking about her, about her um, car being um, being old and breaking down. You talked about her bankruptcy. You just continue to bash her and still you going on and on and on about Melody. Melody. <laughs>
And I don't care that Carlos asked you. You could have just simply said, well, I'm not going to go there with Melody. Um, you know, the friendship is over. You know what? Next question. And let it be that. But we know why you mad. You mad because Mel give it and Mel take it away. And she took it away. And uh, that's, that's the whole deal is with it. That's just my opinion. I'm just talking out loud. Please like, share, subscribe, comment on the video. Let me know what you think.